Hello, this is Mike, and welcome to PHP Programming Video 53 on Super Globals. And today we're going to look at the Super Global Server. Now, there are a number of Super Globals, and some of them we've considered server, Git, Post, Files, Request, Session, Environment, Cookies. And specifically, we've looked a lot at cookies and sessions, and uh, now today's server. We have not looked as much at uh, Post and Git, and we will. And the reason we haven't looked at Git and Post as opposed to other PHP uh, tutorials which might start with those at first is that this is geared toward Adobe Flex Builder. And so Flex Builder does not build its pages in the same way that PHP does. It has a very fluid SWF environment. So the way you use these super globals are a little bit different. But as we move on, we actually will treat these other globals as well. And uh, specifically, the next lesson, we're going to be doing uh, Facebook programming, and so we'll get more familiar with Git and Post, which is typically treated you know, in the first few lessons of PHP. So uh, what is a super global? Basically, it's kind of an array that contains uh, important information or can be used for a specific task. And the super global server, I mean, contains uh, such information as headers and paths and script locations, and it's used quite a bit in PHP. Uh, I have a lot of documentation in the notes, so you can go through those and look at all that documentation if you'd like. But for now, let's go right to PHP Eclipse and look at some programming. So we're in PHP Eclipse. Make sure you click on uh, Video 53 Super Global and on the superglobal.php. And right here, we're doing something a little different. We haven't done this before. We're going to create a table. Really simple. Just uh, declare the uh, tag table. We have a little border there. And then below, you want to close everything with table. And we have all the different super globals that I could come up with. Just kind of have to make this list, test them, and see if they work. Because not all super globals work on the same system. So some will work and some won't. And you can see stuff like gateway interface, server address, server name. You're going to see, uh, just go through the list, HTTP language, uh, remote address, script file name, uh, server admin port, uh, script name, URL request. And we're actually going to use those. Now, for example, that URI request actually is where your particular file is in reference to uh, its uh, domain. So let's go ahead and show that to you real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. We're going to run this file. So now this is a little bit more human readable. You can see what I'm talking about. The server address is uh, 127.001. It's a local host running the Apache server using the git for its primary uh, request method. You can see the document root here is C. Uh, colon forward slash wamp forward slash www the language is english and the local host once again so you can see there's a ton of information here and um, you can see the script file name going all the way from the uh, document root and also you can see the script name which does not include the document root so we're going to actually go back and show you an easier way to print out this table so now we're going to print out the table in a simpler way. I'm going to, first of all, enclose a, a for each loop inside of a table. And then I'm just going through the for each through everything that is inside of that server. Now, the great thing about this, as opposed to trying to guess what's there for my particular system, all the variables that are there will print out. So let's go ahead and run this code and see how it works. Now, you can see it's kind of organized a little bit differently, but still all the same information is in there. But I'm also sure that all the variables in my super global server are there as well. So I've got everything here. And once again, you can see my document root, uh, my server admin, my script file name, and the script name. And we're going to actually use that in the next iteration. I just want to show you that there's yet one more way to actually print out everything that's inside the server super global. And that's using PHP info. So if I go PHP info 32 and run that script, let's see what happens. And actually what that does, it runs my PHP info table, but only gives me out the server piece. Isn't that very nice? And so that's my uh, super global right there. And, it's, and it has all the information that the previous script had as well. So let's go back. And let's just give you a few short examples of how you might use your uh, super global server. In this first example, I just want to get the file name of a particular file that I'm working in. So let's uncomment this. And the way I do that, I basically just use the server super global so in this particular script, I'm actually going to give you the name of the file that I'm in. And the way I'm going to do that is first I'm going to print out request URI, a server super global. And that will actually give me basically the path from the document root to the file itself. Now that's got too much stuff on it. I actually want to get the stuff at the very end. So I'm actually use the command base name and that'll give me the stuff at the very end. And that should be the file name. But remember, sometimes file names due to git, for example, might have a question mark at the end of them. And you want to get rid of that question mark. And if it does have a question mark, I'm going to use the explode, 
which will basically split up the question mark into two pieces. And the, the first piece, of course, will be the PHP file that I'm looking for. The other will be whatever was in the query or the question mark. But then we actually use the reset, which will go wherever the pointer is pointing first, which will be on the zeroth value, and we'll grab that and print that out. And I could have just basically just used explode, and they just took the first value of the array, and that would have been the PHP file. But let's use reset. It's kind of fun, and it's actually a quicker way to do it. So let's run the code and see what we get. Of course, the name of this file is Super Global PHP. So if it runs correctly, I should see Super Global PHP as my name. Let's run it. And indeed, I do get first what the server path is from the domain, and then Super Global once and Super Global twice. Of course, it's both the same. If it had a question mark, it wouldn't have been. But I can see that Super Global basically is the file name that I'm in, and that's what I was looking for. And that's one way you might use the server Super Global. Let's try another one. Another way you might use the Super Global is to get the IP address. So I'm just going to grab the server name, which would be localhost, and I'm going to use get host by name to convert that. So let's go ahead and take a look and see what that does. And there's my server name, and there's my IP address. Hey, that's pretty cool. Now in this particular case, what I'm actually going to do is detect what language I'm in. So I could be in Spanish or French or Italian. So let's use the HTTP accept language, and let's explode that. And uh, we're just going to take the first variable of that, which should be the uh, uh, name of the language, and return that. Let's go ahead, and then we'll run that uh, particular function. Let's go and run that and see what we get. And when you do, it says you have chosen EN English US as your language in your web browser. And you see that occurred, of course, because we actually stuck that language variable into the sentence, and that was printed out. So you can see the server super global can be extremely useful. So dive into the php.net and learn all about server super globals. Take a look at some applications that use them and put them in your own applications. And it will certainly make your life simpler and allow you to grab information that you need for certain processes. So let's quickly review what we've done so far. We talked a little bit about what a super global was and how it holds information that's useful to you or can be used as an array. Uh, that's always there for a specific task. And then we printed out all the possible super globals there were for our system, and we showed you a shortcut method for doing that as well. And finally, what we did is we actually showed a few applications of using super global, but there are many, many more applications for super globals. So once again, make sure that you dig into the php.net documentation and discover more about super globals and how you might use them for your applications. So thanks for listening. This is Mike Lively, and I'll see you next time.